Good morning, everybody. My name is Michelle, and we're here for on Saturday, oh my gosh, I don't know the date, October 14th, uh, with Jim Charles as our uh, channeler today. And this is our regular Saturday webinar. And you can become a member at pukolo.org. That's H U C O L O.org. Also, we are hosting a um, workshop, a human colony workshop in Sedona, Arizona. And there are 16 spots left, and it's only $575 for five nights. Uh, we're going to be doing group ascension work, earth grid, and vortex work, galactic Reiki, Isui Reiki 1 and 2. We're going to be working on telepathy, channeling, chanting um, with Jim and Max and others, and others, other guests. So um, go ahead and sign up as soon as we can so we can secure the place if you are interested. And you can check that out at googleo.org also. So with that being said... I'd like to say good morning to everybody. We have Alex, Bobby, Carrie, Christine, Eva, Jim, of course, <laughs> James, Selish, Sheer, Stephanie, and myself. And who do you have with you, Jim? I have Yvonne. And who, who is a first time person here? Great. And Hi. I have Barbara, I have Angie, I have Will, and I have Ray. Wonderful. Welcome, everybody. Excellent. Uh, did you want to do any, should we do a blessing before we get started? Sure. And or I also want to say, if, if you do want to come to the workshop, get your uh, reservation in as soon as possible. I know that some people are waiting to see if uh, flight, flight uh, costs change. And, but this will be the best time uh, since you're pretty far away from that date. It'll be the, the flights will be cheaper. So uh, I, we're just concerned that people get the best price. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Anybody need to yeah. do a blessing or would like to do a blessing? Nothing. All right, Barbara would like to. Anybody else? I'll do one. What? I can do one, or maybe I'll wait till the end. Oh, no, no. Do it now. I'll do Barbara. Barbara. Barbara, Barbara first. first. Ready? Already? Already? <laughs> There is energy set aside for today so that your success may be verified and that all things will come about in a positive way and move you and stimulate you in the direction of ascension. Nice. Okay. Go ahead. When the heart is open, many things can be added to the system. Remember to keep your heart open and resonate with those things that you need to add to your arsenal so that you may have all the things that you need to rise up at the appropriate times. Be aware that the appropriate times are soon. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's great. All right. Uh, we had some requests today for Arcturian, a Grindle, uh, Ratire. Is that is that how you say it? Yeah. Um, for the Egyptian god. Takara or a Lyran? Yeah, a Lyran. Yes. And the name of the Egyptian god was Cake or Keek? Christine requested by Christine. Who? Christine would like to the, the German mystic, um, non mystic. Does she have a name? Anyway, prophet, political moralist for women in the church. Hildegard of Bingen. Or Hil Bingen. Well, Hildegard of Bingen. I have not either, but maybe we'll meet her today. It'll be super cool. It'd be interesting. <laughs> All right, I don't know who's coming today. I do not believe Elijah is coming today. He has not spoken to me. He's been very busy. I think there's a lot of... Is there holidays right now, Jewish holidays? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, he's been busy with those, yes. So I'm. Sh I think that's probably why he's not coming today. But um, I wasn't even aware of that. But it makes sense. So let's see who comes and uh, hope for the best messages possible. And um, we will see who is wanting to be with us today. Thank you very much for being here. Love you all. And I will see you in well, a couple hours or less than two hours. All right. Have a good session. Thanks, Jim. Good morning, Grandpa. <laughs> Greetings. I'm well, one moment, please. Yeah, that's better. All right. I just came to say hello and see. I heard my name being mentioned, so I was wondering if there were any questions from anyone. I know I've been working in the Israeli government for a while now, so it's a rough job, but someone's got to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you, you and everybody's been on. Yeah, there are questions. Um, Eva first has a question. I Oh, Grindel, thank you so much for coming. It's it's such a treat. <laughs> thank you very much. It's a treat to see you, too. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. thank you for showing me the image of um, you running after mosquitoes to protect me. I yes. love that. <laughs> so I have a, you know, I have a actually um, kind of request from you. Um, according to my higher self, I'm supposed to become um, fearless in this lifetime. So I would love you, if possible, to at some point show yourself to me. And even if I scream and hide under the bed, please enjoy, uh, ignore it. Because yeah. I'm supposed to be, you know, again, fearless. <laughs> I think that the fearless part comes with your everyday life. You have to learn to become fearless in your everyday life, not just with seeing aliens or things of that nature. They want you to be able to stand up and make decisions without being afraid to. And they want you to stand up and know what you're doing without being afraid to make a move. Move boldly forward. And that... Also about being not afraid of aliens as well. But I think what they are more concerned about is that you move confidently through your life so that you have more joy. 
you need to experience more joy in your life right now. And it's blocked by some fearful thoughts and images and it's blocked by fear in many ways. So that that is what they're more concerned about. They're concerned that they would like you to become more aware of the joy that you, you, you could have if you are bold and courageous. Yeah. I'm working on it, thank you. And we love you for that. You are making an attempt and there is improvement. Yes, there is. Chloe can attest to that. There is some <laughs> improvements, but um, she still sees that you need to continue to move forward too. Yeah. Now there's been many improvements where, where with Chloe, she's become a very confident person in many respects. So that's good. You're moving forward quite nicely. You're very much more feeling more yourself, I think. Yeah. yeah. Is there another question? Um, I have actually a question. So yeah. uh, about a month or two ago, I was with my friends and I sensed your presence in the room and we were talking about you and I felt that you were that you almost channeled through me, but then you stopped, and I was wondering why? Well, it wasn't me that stopped it. It was you. You were the one that stopped it. I was still coming, but you were, you were a little bit hesitant. There was some kind of energy that stopped it from going through. I'm not sure what it was. Can you, maybe somebody in the room there that you were channeling with, was a little frightened and so they didn't want you to bring it through so that might have stopped it okay but it will i will come through yeah there's no question also you, you were thinking how am i going to do his voice and it doesn't <laughs> matter you don't have to do my voice like this i can come through you and and sound Anyway, I can sound like a ballerina if you want, but I, I don't think that I don't think that's gonna happen. But I can sound a little bit nicer. Mm, I prefer my voice this way, but you don't have to bring it through this way. So don't worry about that. All right. Thank you. And the hand motions. I just like to be dramatic. Raw. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Grendel. Thank yeah, you. Grendel, does her size not matter? It mattered for Jim for a long time. Well, I can get into her to some extent enough to channel. I will just go through the chakra area. I won't come in all the way. Yeah, I can come into his body all the way. Actually, he gained about five pounds, so that helped. But um, not him, but me. But, uh, but yeah, so, yeah, she's too small for me to get all the way in. So I would just go down the chakra and through the, uh, the channel areas into the chakra areas. There was another question in the room, but she left. Okay. Well, Sheer has a question for you. Okay, there that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Hey, hello. I have a question. I channeled just a few minutes ago. Uh, was it a reptilian prior that came through? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Do you know who it was? I don't know who it was, but I know it was an Eliashondai Zendi. Okay. Yeah. And another question I have is, I've been thinking about you lately. Have you been around or... Of course, I'm always around. I don't spend much time on in this area of the world much anymore because I'm working in Israel a lot while he's still awake. But you have to remember, there's seven hours difference. So when he goes to sleep, I can be over here in, in the evening. Mostly, if I'm here, it'll be in your evening. All right, very good. Cheer, hey baby, how you doing? Hey, Grindel, I want to ask a question about Bitcoin. It's ah, really Bitcoin, good. yes. Uh-huh. Um, I wanted to know if uh, Bitcoin is a good investment. 
Bitcoin, yes, for now it is. Remember, Bitcoin is going up quickly, so invest now. But it will reach a ceiling at some point. So at some point, it will be done in, in some respects. You know what I'm saying? It will reach a ceiling. They will have to stop it at some point. But for now, it is still really good and will last for several years. Oh, wow. And do you know if there are any negative groups like the Illuminati that plan on, on affecting Bitcoin in a negative way? They can't affect it. It's unvirus. It, no virus can touch it at this point. They may be trying to get break into Bitcoin and several others that are similar to it, but it's set up in a way that it is un, unbreakable because all the information is not inside of a computer. It's in cyberspace, and they cannot control cyberspace at this time. Oh, wonderful. And uh, do you know about uh, chaos magic and sigils? No, 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 I heard, never heard of that one. What is it? Tell me. Um, it's um, a way to link this dimension with dimensions that have magic in them. And there's a group. Oh. Well, this dimension has magic in it now, too. Remember that. So, yes, um, since the changing of uh, September 2014, magic has been introduced into third dimension. It is not very strong quite yet, but it will get stronger as time goes on. You will enter an era where science and magic will seem to overlap one another, and uh, some things will seem like magic that are science, and some things will seem like science that are magic. In this era, you're seeing a greater amount of illusionists come forth with illusions that are almost impossible to explain, and they are connected to a different dimensional thought process. Not necessarily that it is true magic yet, but it will be soon. And do you know how to use sigils? Schedules. Sigil, S-I-G-I-L-S. What is said he didn't even know what it was. No, I don't know what it is. That word doesn't, has not come through in my English dictionary. It's like a drawing that has... Um, it's like a focal point that draws energy to the sigil or to something you want to energize with it. Ah, oh, yes. It's another form of the law of attraction in very many senses. You put the energy into the picture or the item, and then you concentrate on that. Instead of doing it to the universe, you're doing it to a particular item. It works better for some people because they can see what they're doing and have a connection with the object that they're bringing energy through. So therefore, we don't call it what you call it. I don't remember what you said, but um, we call it something different. But yes, it is a, another form of a law of attraction. It can be used very positively, but be careful. That form also can be used in a very negative way as well because it can be empowered positively or negatively. Please only use positive energy on these sigils or whatever you call them. Thank you, I will. Also, right. Brendel, uh, now it's here. I just yeah. want to update you that I'm... Uh, after the math and physics pre-course, and I'm going to study water technologies on the 22nd. So, yeah, yeah. do you have anything positive to say about that? Something encouraging? Yeah, the very fact that it's on the 22nd tells me that it's a good move. The number 22 has been appearing quite a lot throughout your your uh, lives. I, I don't know if anyone here is experiencing Yes. 22 yes but it's it's a, a very positive number right now and you, it the very fact that that 22 is appearing there makes me think that it's a, a good thing I'm, I'll look into it for you what's the subject water 
it's water technologies. It's in uh, Rupin yeah. next oh, to yeah. the oh, yeah. in Definitely. Israel. <laughs> Definitely great for Israel. You know how dry and hot Israel is. Water technologies are going to be a big thing in the future. And it will change the way they do things in many senses. Thank yeah. you. They're already talking about it in the in the governments because technology is moving forward rather quickly right now. And so um of course, some of it is because of alien intervention, but they're trying not to, to use that because it, some of the alien intervention uh, is because the aliens are trying to make you destroy yourselves and they're giving you too much information. And so they, uh, the governments were warned about this. So only a couple of them are using this very advanced information but they're not they don't they're not advanced enough countries to do anything really with it uh at this time Thank yeah you very much. you're welcome yeah keep going share you're doing you're doing what you need to do yeah <laughs> thank you thank you um, Amran had a question he wanted me to read for him. Yeah. Um, is Sanat Kimura the manifestation of another prime creator from another universe? Thank you. And plus That's a loaded hearts. question. Jeez. All right. Yes, it's a creator being from. Um, and yes, it's not from this uh, from this universe. So it has a different kind of energy source in some ways. And, but it's, um, it's hard to communicate with Sanat because the energy is so different right now, but these different kinds of energies are coming and being introduced to this universe right now. And they're finding energies on uh, your planet now that have never or have not existed there for many, many, many centuries. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Christina Raposa has a question. Yeah. yeah. Christine? Christina. Hello, Brindle. Greetings. Blessings. Hey. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, can you tell me the Women's March that went on in the um, Israeli-Palestine area? Um, is that making um, a difference? It, yes, mm -hmm. it is. It's it's making it's doing two things. It's making a lot of people really mad. But the second thing it's doing, it's making a lot of people really think so good but when you have mad and thinking at the same time sometimes the that's not a good thing but there are good thinkers and the bad thinkers if you know what i'm saying some of the people that are mad are thinking bad things but the, the good thinkers are actually saying you know what we're we are behind the times here we need to catch up to the rest of the world in some senses. Because, let's face it, some of these guys do travel around the world doing their freaking business the way they do it. But they are noticing how behind they are. But the thing is, their religion to them has become secondary. And money has become almighty in many of their situations. And so this is an eye-opener also because they're seeing that they're not alone. Many other countries are focused on finances over their families, religions, and things of this nature. So they want to catch up to these guys. They want to play with the big guys. And they already have a lot of money. They already have uh, some of the things they want. But the technology and the the free lifestyle is not there. They they live under a 
a, a very strange set of rules in in those areas and the females are oppressed continually and constantly so it is waking some of them up but actually a lot of them prefer that the we, women be oppressed and they will those are the bad thinkers but the other ones want would like to have a, a relationship with some free thinking women and have those relationships but not in their own country what about the um the women drivers who now in saudi arabia can drive um, I, I, you're very muffled can you speak up what about the women in saudi arabia who now can drive is that gonna continue but with less violence uh, and there's gonna be some more violence but it's going to continue to move forward. They've made an impact and they know it. They have made an impact and they are not going to stop. It will continue. There will be changes in the Middle East, yes. Yes, yeah, no question. I'll more energy, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Is, are there any questions in the room? Currently. Any questions? No. Okay, Liney would actually like to know if you know anything about an announcement being made on Monday by physicists? Um, I can't reveal that because that's against the rules. It okay. has to be done by your own people and not by me. Ah, sorry about that, Liney. Uh, but you guys have to do that, but I know that it, that is interesting, yes. You'll find it interesting. So, Amran, can you speak? I'm not sure what it is you want me to ask from the typing. Amran, yeah. yeah I, can, I can speak for a little. Okay. Uh, very yeah. good, Amran, yeah. Hello, hello, Grindel, how are you? Greetings. I don't. I don't think you would. Uh, this is your favorite questions, <laughs> but I will ask anyways. Maybe you can answer. Now um, try. Yeah, <laughs> this is an information I read uh, on on Google. Uh, you you gave me an answer on on the being called Sanat Kumara. Yeah, and it is said that he contains or he is the source of um, human consciousness. Did the consciousness of humanity. And he contains his energy field, like contains all of humanity. Is he really the source of um, the consciousness of humanity, or something like that? Well, no, they're not. But he is really not. No, because he's from another universe and has different kinds of energy sources. He uh, relates to humanity from because where he is from. The energy source that he is from is more like a human consciousness, more like humans than anyone else. He's a creator being. God is the creator of uh, human consciousness the way it is now. So, but he is very aware of that. He is from another universe and has energies that are quite different. But no, he is not the embodiment of human consciousness. That's impossible. It, it's impossible that he is. They, but they like to give him credit for a lot of things. So, but I will tell you this. He is a unique energy. And he is from a different universe. And God is in all universes. But God is the creator of the human consciousness. Not anyone else. No one else can take credit for that. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, yeah. and I don't really think he's trying to do that. I think somebody's putting that on him. They're they're giving him that a kind of thought process because of the day and age that we're living living in. The channel, whoever channeled this information, might have put a little bit of their own foresight in it because he does have a very human appearance he has a very human outlook 
a very, very high advanced human outlook, though, about many things. And so they might have added that in there just to because it, it resonated with them. Yeah, okay. Okay. But, but no, no one can take credit for that except God. Okay. He, f he feels to me like he is uh, connected with another universe. Yes. Uh, God from another universe that he kind of was a part of that prime creator. He is. He is so. connected to another universe. You are correct. Okay. Very much. That, that, that was very much what I was... That the energy that he brings from this other universe is unique and has never been around before. You will see that it will have effect on the human consciousness eventually. And that's probably another reason why they say he's uh, the creator of human consciousness, because he is going to advance human consciousness. That he will do. He will advance human consciousness, but he is not the creator of it or the essence of it necessarily. Okay, okay. But he has a a, a unique position with, with God, doesn't he? Yes. No, okay. That was it for me. Thank you, Grindel. I will let another one. Thank speak. you, Amran. Yeah. Sure Bye -bye. has a question related to that. Yeah. Uh, that being that you speak of that uh, a creator being from a parallel universe, you mean that God have given him permission to come here in order to do stuff, uh, stuff here. Correct. I see, because I know that they are able to get uh, permission to do so, to go to other universes, but I thought it was more of exploration. Mostly, but this is a interesting situation uh you'll have to learn more about it as he becomes a more prevalent to and uh understood by more people i is can't he, give away all his uh secrets is that being reincarnated on the earth right now or is it on a different level no he's not reincarnated he is just in the, this universe and around the Earth atmosphere at this time. Okay, cool. I do not know that he is reincarnated or in any particular person or any many any group of people. He is just here for the first time ever. Uh, Omram says that uh, he's a fire, he's the guardian of flames of source. I do know that there are uh, universes made only of energy, water, and stuff like that. Is he come from that kind of universe, a universe of uh, fire energies? To be honest with you, I've never been to his universe. It's not. I I don't really know. I would have to find out. But I know that he has unique energies, and that his universe is very different than ours. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Bobby Soto has a question. His question yeah. is, I've been told I'm fearful of connecting because of what I could see. Do you have any advice with overcoming this energy? I understand what you're saying. The, you're, you're a visionary. You can see more than most people when connecting to different things. Now, I'm not sure what you're trying to connect to. Is it that you're trying to connect with um, uh, channeling? Is it, Are you trying to uh, uh, connect with uh, psychic energy? Whatever it is that you're afraid to connect to is because the visuals come in very strongly. Do not be afraid of the visuals. But, but before you connect, make sure that it is positive energy. Make sure that it is an energy that you can deal with, not something very negative or something very uh, uncertain, but a very positive energy. Make sure that if you do connect, it is positive. And then you have nothing to fear because even if it is ugly, like perhaps myself, um, 
you will not be as frightened because I'll tell you a joke and make you more comfortable. But the thing is, I am ugly. I, well, I think you're ugly too. Boy, what just so plain. Yeah, it's like looking at a stick figure. Yeah. But anyway, um there's no ugly, there's just different, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, to me there's ugly. But anyway, I have to call it as I see it. Ugly is. Yeah. All right. But um but don't worry about that because it's not the main idea behind the connection. You're bringing information from someone who has to get a message across. So therefore, connect in your positivity to these beings and bring forth their information if it is positive. Do not be afraid. Bobby Soto, yes. You do have that energy and it is going to be used for good. So continue to move forward. Be brave, fearless. That is the one thing that is stopping most people today is fear. Fear, they are training your people to be more fearful. All these events of killings, all these terrorists, all these people that are out there just causing you to be afraid to go anywhere, do anything. They're killing people in the movie theaters, in the concert realms, in the every, everywhere, in the dance places. So they want you to be afraid to go anywhere. So be courageous. Do not be afraid because that will destroy your mission. And it will destroy the lives. It will you will not be able to reach the people that you are supposed to reach. You must be fearless in this day and age. Not afraid of death, but only knowing that you are going to do the business of God and church and find those places where the people will listen or do what you're directed to do. But you cannot be afraid. You just cannot be afraid. It is the death of your mission. Can I jump in and say something? Yes. Directly on point. Um, Wendy and I created a hangout just on Thursday about fear and releasing fear and activating, moving past the veil of confusion. Mm -hmm. So check it out, Triple Hamsa Activation on Reiki with Will. Yeah. Yeah. Any, I, I'm very serious about, I, I know in many of you, you can't help but be afraid of some things. But you need to find your courage. This is the day and age that they are teaching you how to be so afraid that it's crippling. Do not let yourself be crippled by these. Some of these are false flags, and you know what I mean by that. And some of these are real events. You can't tell them apart. The evidence, no one can get the truth out there anymore because the media is so swayed and so uh, paid off and corrupt. Your media is trash. So do not be affected by what you hear or what you see on the news or the radio, but move forward with what you need to do, what you know you have to do. Do not be crippled by fear. It is the one thing that will destroy your mission. Thank you for that. You for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Carrie Atwood has a question. Carrie, yeah. Uh, she says, I have been having issues in my meditation. Yeah. As if it has been blocked. How can I overcome this? Oh, another thing, yeah. The earth energies and the energies of the solar system, the energies of all the different things that are happening. 
You have CMEs. You have earth energies. Oh, CMEs are coronal mass ejections from the sun. You have uh, galactic energy from the center of the galaxy. Your planet is still facing the center of the galaxy, and it's now receiving energies from those areas that it hasn't received in quite a long time, or at least not in this in this way. So, and you have uh, uh, solar system energies when you were in your alignment just recently. The gravities from huge uh, planets and the effects of that through the asteroid belt into the earth elements and things of that nature have affected a lot of things. So let me tell you this. At this point, some people cannot even meditate at all. But if you bring in a great calmness, a great relaxation, breathe deep, breathe deep and let out all the things that are not necessary in your system before you do your intention meditation and start to relax because what it is is these energies do not let you relax properly they do not let you become part of the spiritual realm they just are bouncing all around and they are, are affecting your thought processes so therefore Relax as greatly as you can. This is the one thing. And, they just and, are bouncing all around. And yes. they are, are affecting your thought processes. So therefore, relax as greatly as you can. This can you mute them? mute them? Interesting. That was like an echo from the past. But anyway. Relax um, as now you need is that? that one. Yeah. You mute them out so that I can't echo through them. Oh, it's a time machine. Oh. But anyway, no, um, um, anyway, let me tell you this. <laughs> Relax as much as possible. Relax and become comfortable within. You see, once you are pushing out love energy and relaxation from the body pushing it out not taking it in from outside then you can have a meditation you must start to emit some of the love feelings some of the energies coming in from the universe some of those things that are making you relax and feel whole emit feel the love draw on the love the purity of God and whatever it is that that helps you to emit the good feelings because what happens is you're taking in all the energies all around you and it's affecting you the way you're feeling but if you relax fill yourself with the light fill yourself with the love then you're going to emit and push away those energies does that make sense? Then have, you can concentrate. Then I you can actually you. meditate. I have a question slash yeah. addendum to that. Um, I have been practicing with a friend of mine, uh, Satanama, using the mudras. And I find the mantra in general, when I have a hard time like getting still, mantra makes that possible. Yeah, yeah. Like, use whatever you need to use, yes. Yeah. So, okay. There's a question from Michelle Mullet. She said there's a, lot, a great deal of UFO activity around her house. She oh, yeah. and her house. And she saw three yesterday. Do you know anything about that and whom it may be? Thank you very much and blessings oh. to you, Grendel. Thanks to one of our friends on Earth, Dawn. Parkinson, I like him a lot. He has actually brought a lot of these. Uh, he has actually manipulated or, or brought forth a way to bring a lot of ships to the earth. Now, they didn't come when he thought they were going to come, but they are arriving now in different uh, ways. 
So, yes, there is a lot of UFO activity right now, and you will be seeing it. Since you have a lot of fourth dimensional energy awake in your brain, you will be even able to see the fourth dimensional ships, which I believe that's what you are seeing. If you're seeing a lot of ships, you're looking into the fourth dimension because a lot of these ships are fourth dimensional. Now, there are a lot that are, that when they touch, the electromagnetic fields of your planet become visible and become uh they you can see them in third dimension so that is also happening especially if you're seeing the orb like uh ones that are very close to the earth some of them get very close because they're allowed to be in the atmosphere they're just not allowed to land so they are uh, they are coming close. They are allowed to. So be aware of that. That's beautiful. Did you have a different question about that? Did I answer that? No, I think that's sufficient. Pete has a question. Pete Andrew. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah. Go. Hello. Yeah. There. Hello. Um. I greetings. have a question, Grendel. Grenda, greetings. Greetings. Um, my first question is: is that I had I've heard about this recently. Um, I've heard about this recently. It was a. Uh, it was. What was it? You Pinsy? cut out, Pete. Maybe. If you can't, if your sound doesn't come back on, you can type it out for me. Yeah, I didn't get the whole thing. All right. Uh, Kingsley has a question. Pete, I'm going to come back to you, or you can type it out because your sound just cut I'm interested in your question, Pete, because somebody blocked that out so that I couldn't get it. So I really want to hear it. If you can get through, I'd like to hear it. Okay, go ahead and type it out for me, and we'll yeah. let um, Kingsley go next, please. Okay. Have to um, um, who is this? Kingsley. Greetings. Yeah, greetings. Um, I I wanted to ask uh, the ETs. Do they think and hear each other in their minds, or? just like send and receive receive uh i mean they speak verbally mentally all right let me tell you something there are different ets and they all uh interact differently there are some that speak to each other psychically in the mind back and forth and that's why their mouths are becoming uh evolving away because they don't use their um their speech as much as they they used to now when some of these species uh, species have to use language or sign language when getting together with the galactic councils because there are third dimensional beings in some of these councils that only use um, languages so they have to be able to communicate so their translators it's difficult to go from the mind to a translator uh, uh, technology, but some have a, have worked it out. But the, some of them just do speak the galactic language. See, there is a galactic language that has uh, been uh, taught to all the species in the galactic councils so that they can all communicate together without the use of too much translating machines or whatever but also there is the hand language of the galactics those that absolutely cannot speak any longer must use the hand language at the galactic meetings so that they can be interpreted and understood because not everyone in the galactic council has the ability for mental telepathy for mental uh, speaking. So there are many different uh, methods out there being used for uh, speaking one to another. But when they get together as a group, 
they all have to use the galactic uh, either hand language or the spoken language because that is the way they have to communicate now like i said if if they do not speak any longer there are a couple of species that new can do not have vocal cords any longer so they have to use the sign language does that language have a name incidentally now the galactic I mean, language is called the galactic okay yes all right the galactic language can you speak a little bit of it it is a combination of several different languages so that it is easier could to you learn give us a sampling by... pardon you could a... you give us a sample um yeah i guess just a minute i don't really go to the galactic councils i'm not one of their favorite people to go to the galactic councils but i do know the galactic language to some extent and it is a combination of many different languages so when you hear it it's a little different because there is many little there are kinds of things in there that are symbolized to all different languages let me give you an example cool. yeah oh yeah oh wow that's something <laughs> great <laughs> yeah I, I won't tell you what i said but the galactic council I hope that was nice <laughs> but, all right. yeah okay i'm not a politician okay. mm. yeah that's that's then, what we love about you here so much <laughs> mm -hmm. we love that about you so much um, yeah I, I, when it comes to the way they everyone does politics I say bah humbug about that because it's yeah. not honest and open. I I have a, an actual, um, I sort of liked your president at first until he became a dick. <laughs> and then. What? Um, <laughs> That's why I love you, Grendel. Very open and honest, but you know. Uh, he's uh, not all there, so he's a little off there to the side. But I liked him anyway. But he's not 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 on my favorite list anymore. But um, uh, I, at first I did, I did. It killed me that he said he's putting up a wall around Me Mexico. I thought that was great. I thought it was Super funny. Dumb. But anyway, I thought he was teasing. But I'm all right. Okay. Well, I thought he had a sort of sense of humor like I do, but I don't know. But we'll see. Oh, I'm not sure about I'm not sure about that. I don't know if anyone in the room with you has a question. Uh, well, there might be somebody else that wants to come. Okay, why don't we go ahead and do that? Yeah, I've been here long enough. You guys oh, actually, are... could you just answer something for Liney real quick? Yeah, yeah, Liney. She wants to know. She wants to know if her recent implant what? Um, is. Going, she wants to know if her recent implant is going to be removed, and oh, if Christy yeah, yeah. Campbell's yeah, is going that. to be removed that, yet, and why they got made galactic news, Liney. That. Your implant made galactic <laughs> news because it's the first <laughs> implant of its kind on Earth. It's a non-removable hybrid implant from uh, a, a hybrid species that was created in a test tube. It uh, was created, uh, 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 it's a, an insectoid gray species. They're very small but they're very highly intelligent there's only like four or five million of them in the universe but they're very advanced and they're pretty soon your um that um implant will be able to be removed within a couple of weeks they're learning how to remove it but it has five different implants in one and it's very interesting that it's showed up the way it did. But um, why they put it in you, we're still not sure. 
So does that mean it's not getting removed because it is well, not removable? But they can't remove it yet. It's made okay. to be in non-removable. That is also for CC Campbell or Christine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Christy Campbell also has apparently the same thing. So if you guys want to like, I don't know, if you yeah. if you know anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody, if you make those go away, I think both of them would appreciate it. Well, that. um, I don't know. Is it the exact same implant? She, I don't think I, so. she said yes. Yeah. It is? I I, I'm not aware that there was I more than one. I don't know. I'm not sure. But congratulations, well, Lainey, on making galactic news. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. All right. All right. Well, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and say goodbye, au revoir. I love you. Good to see yeah. you again. Yeah, um, have a good one, and um, uh, I'll talk to you some other time. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. Shabbat shalom. What? Shabbat shalom. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that Hebrew Stop. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Yes, I'm. I'm glad you can speak that. It's fun. It's it has a connection with angelic language. Did you know that? Yeah, there's a few words there. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, love it. All right. Don't drink too much. All right, everybody, have a good time. All right. Bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I bring you greetings from the Octorian Council. Mm, welcome. Great and you. thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Very exciting. It is a good day when we can speak to those of the Earth. We have not been doing so for quite a while, but it is a time for us to make our presence more well known. There are others on this planet that do channel Octorians. However, the Council has not always been represented in these particular channelings. We would like to be represented with your peoples here. We are so happy for you joining us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did you want to... One thing about the Octorian Council, we are connected with the Galactics councils and many other councils around your planet there is the whale and dolphin alliance and, and your Ag agarthan councils your um many many light worker councils that are made of humans and aliens alike also the council of nine the orion council um and Ashtar Command, etc. There are many that we are speaking to. Girk Fiknir, yes, of course. The White Brotherhood? The Light Brotherhood. There, we are not necessarily allies, I see. but we do make contact and are committed to speaking to others. If an alliance is to be made, then we will be brought into it in a very serious thought process. But the reason for uh, activities with these in a non-alliance way is because we believe in many of the things they're doing, but not we are not strictly um, adhered to all the things that they are doing. So, and I was just curious. 
Did you have a message that you wanted to share with us before we started asking questions? Yes. Thank you. We, as a council in the Octorian area, we know that there are Octorians in the Grook Fignier Council. There is also separate Octorian medical uh, teams that act on their own, and other Octorians. Octorian space is large, and so Octorians is a general term. So we do have many species that come from Octorus. So we, we know that they exist. But my message to the earth is this. Let us know when you are ready and we will be here to help you. Your planet has refused any help from outside worlds, except for perhaps Gurkvignir, which they allow to help with things that are outside politics and outside society, such as weather and earthquakes and things of this nature. But we would like to actually help speak to the governments in a different way, but they do not uh, readily understand why we want to do this. And it is not for a takeover, and it is not for uh, our own interests, but to save your timeline or, and make it better. Your timeline is fragile. But according to the prophecies of the universe, they will, it will continue, although many changes will come to it. But we would like to see these changes come in a much more peaceful way than it has been predicted. But perhaps it must happen the way it must happen. But we will be influential in keeping you as safe as possible, as from a distance, as we are told that we must stay. Thank you. Um, I don't know why, but my body is telling I'm supposed to ask you if you have a message for me. <laughs> you personally, you yes. do have some Octorian within you and so are guided by some of our energies. The message for you is to always listen to these energies because they will lead you into paths of greater fulfillment and prosperity. You are meant to be prosperous, but you have not ever been fulfilled. Well, that is super accurate. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I was thinking um, I'm getting tired of having the fear loop run my life, so I'm just going to, yes. like, fear pack, runs really pack, every, pack everything up and take off, and I don't know what's going to happen, but it'll all pan out, I'm pretty sure. Excellent. I, I do not understand your uh, what you are saying. If you are going to become nomadic, that is interesting. I don't know. It seems like it could be a fun thing, or maybe maybe you would advise a different way. You are no, not in the desert area, so being nomadic might be a little better for you than others. All right, I'm just gonna move on. The uh, thank you very much, much love. Um, you are welcome. I do not understand your culture well enough to. Be specific with your future. That's fine. Um, I just want to be useful to humanity. That's all. We all do. Um, so Eva has a question. Go ahead. Okay. We both have. So Chloe. Um, yeah. Hi, I have a question. Um, so my friend Kaya is moving in with us next weekend, and I was wondering. Is she part angel? What what are um what is she? I guess. 
Um, she is many things, but I have to, I do not know her that well to uh, tell you what she is, except for what you see in your mind about her. I would have to be, I would have to go to her and scan her. One moment, please. All right. I see that she is part Arcturian also. She does have some influences from higher spiritual energies. This is interesting. A, a very little bit of angel is in her, but only a teardrop. This is the gift of the angels from a past life when she was doing work for them and with them. Now, she is not perfect, but she is very good, and her intentions are good. Let her know that you know and see her as she is, and that she must continue to move in these realms to maintain the purity that she is experiencing now. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a question. When I think about you, just, just the name Arcturians, I immediately feel flow of love to my heart. It's like, do I have a connection with you? Because why would I feel it like that? Yes. You have a connection with Arcturians in many lives. Plus there is some within you. Not a lot, but a little. The thing is about your past connections with Arcturians is that you were very family-oriented with the Arcturian species. You chose not to be very close to that species in this life because it would draw away from your work here. I cannot explain it any better than that. Octorian spirituality would actually dis be a distraction in your third dimension at this time. Okay. But there is a great deal of love coming from us to you. Thank you. I feel that love. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie Baker has a question. Stephanie? Stephanie. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. I find that I um, resonate highly with Octorian energy and the messages that I um, listen to. And I'm wondering what, if any, connection or maybe um, DNA I may have with Octorians. That's one question. And my second one has to do with a species called Altarians. Ah, oh, the Altarians. Yes, they're very, they're a very good species. I like them very much. They're very different. <clears throat> they are humanoid in some ways, but actually not completely humanoid. And the first question is, yes, you do have some uh, Octorian in you, and that is a good thing. It will help you with your life as you become more balanced. You are balanced already, but there is always greater balance coming in the future once you realize how to balance with each of the species that comes through you in the sense that you are hybridized by many. Now, back to the Alturians. I Did I say that correctly? Altarian. Yes, the Altarians, the, your pronunciation. They do have sensors on their head. There is a... Yes. They are not the same color as you. They have some blue tint to their skin, and they are very friendly, very interactive, very social kinds of beings. 
they are always talking. I have an implant in one of my fingers from them. And although I understand it's no longer activated, I am still, I guess, curious as to if. Was there a period in your life where you were very talkative? I, I, I think it just, it depends on the circumstances, but not necessarily generally, no. Usually they are attracted to those that are good communicators. So you must have been a good communicator or still are a good communicator because they are attracted to those kinds of things or they learn from people that are good com communicators. It is something that is a high interest among their people. So that is one reason why they would maybe choose you for an implant. There are others that have this implant in their fingers but are not aware of it. Yes, uh, I, I do believe that the commu gift of communication has been um, one of my, uh, part of my skill set. Um, and I wanted to be a lawyer for a long time. I don't know if that's good or, or not. Well, they must have chosen you because of your communication skills and because uh, there must be something unique about the way you communicate that others do have not picked up on but is more advanced in some way. That is the kind of people they are attracted to. I understand that they are, they are quite selective on whom they communicate with, that they yes. are of a high spiritual um, Yes, very much. And it, I believe it, part of their interest in your communication is spiritual. They are a high know. spiritual, uh, community and perhaps you seem like you are a high spiritual person as well and so the connection between communication and spirituality would be a high interest for them thank you and my last question uh, or last request so to speak would be i appreciate species and them and all of them as a matter of fact very much and if there's anything that you could recommend uh, with regards to my meditation practice that would allow in between Arcturians and Altarians to be more consistent or stronger then um, I'm open to whatever you could recommend that would make me a cleaner or clearer vessel for that and I do thank you for your counsel. Well before your meditations, perhaps you would like to ask for forgiveness and cleansing. This will help the spirituality come in in a greater way. Fill yourself up after being forgiven with the white light, Holy Spirit, as you call it, and spirituality. So therefore, you are totally cleansed and they are more apt to find a greater connection. Thank you so very much. High blessings to you. High blessings, blessings indeed. As well. We have a question from Bobby Soto. He was told he was our, an Arcturian healer in a past life, and he would like to know how to bring that energy more into his current life. Excellent. Well, let me tell you something about Octorian healers. They are unique. They heal by using the nervous system as a grid. And you will find that also they use toning and singing during their healing sessions. Some of you that were at the workshop the last one in August, had a sample of Octorian healing. We were there to supervise that demonstration. So it is that the hands move very quickly along the body, connecting nerve endings and bringing them into a cluster. 
and bringing them into healing energy forces. But at the same time, toning or singing is done so that the vibrational force, the vibration of the room and the patient and the and the the administrator of the healing are all very similar so that the healing can be more advantageous. Thank you for that. Um, Shira is next. <clears throat> Hello, greetings. Greetings. Um, I want to ask a couple of questions. First of all, the enlightenment went very well according to a prediction it was supposed to go very catastrophic so is it a very good sign it is a good sign the the reasons for the in your planet remaining intact during the alignment have much to do with people uh praying and much to do with the fact that there are many civilizations outside of your own sending energy to your planet. I see. And I know that the government meeting was delayed. Do you know if there's already a date for it? It has not been rescheduled yet. I see. This is unfortunate because much needs to be discussed. And they are going through a great deal of changes in governments. Well, in the sense that there are some governments that are that are economically very weak, such as Spain, Italy, and Greece. Those three financial groups are very weak. And also China has joined them in a weak as a weak uh, country financially because of how many people they have, even though they have a great deal of exports, they are still not making things work the way they should. I see, and I know that China is one of the four nations that one of them can bring first contact, uh, so I bet that China is now very much pro for the first contact in order to approve the, the, their economic state, if that's the case. Yes. But right now, I forgot the original question, but at this point, your governments are needing our help, but they refuse it. Ah, oh, the government meetings. Yes, they have not been rescheduled yet, and we hope that they are being rescheduled very soon because Gurk Fiknir and all those that support these groups must have a say at this time. It is important for them to report what they see because they can see things from a different vantage point than your governments. I see, and if the governments will continue being reckless, like the North Korea and America situation, is it possible that um, galactic and universal councils will move in because the Earth governments breaks laws like Antarctica and such? Well, they do not break galactic laws. They break their own laws, which is different. Now, if we were to intervene or anyone else would be intervening in your social and political uh, actions, that would be breaking the galactic law. You see, you're not part of the galaxy yet in the sense that you uh, meet with the galaxy or talk to the galaxy or any of these things. So you are not under galactic law in the sense that you are a member of the galaxy. You may be breaking galactic law if you were part of it, but since you are not, they cannot hold you accountable for rules you do not even know exist. However, you break your own laws and you go against your own 
your own people, and that is something very disturbing, but it has been happening for many, many centuries. The thing is, it's happening in a greater way now than ever before, in some ways. Okay, yeah. thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. King Kingsley would like to um, heighten his telepathic and telekinetic abilities, and he wonders if you have any suggestions for him. Yes. These energies and powers come from parts of the brain that are not yet awakened. Your third eye is a... Uh, it registers and measures information that is coming in from the outside. You, when your third eye opens, it brings in information not only of third and fourth dimension, but also psychic and magical informations as well. All kinds of information from the universe. This kind of information is not actually dealt with very well by humans. That's why your third eyes are very much in a closed position, only opened maybe to 50% in the most aware humans. The ones that have their third eye completely open on your planet are usually mad or not aware of what is really happening because they are disturbed by all the information that is coming. Now, because that part of the brain that regulates psychic energy and thought processes is not open at the same time, they cannot possibly understand all the information or process it. Your brains have an area that have, has to open so that the information that comes from the third eye can be processed properly. And that is why your third eye does not open as much as it has. However, if you are wanting to open this area in the brain, that must be part of your meditations. Bring in energies to open this portion of the brain. It is not always possible to open it because it is a delicate area and sensitive to all kinds of different uh, energies. So be careful when opening this area that you only bring in positive and you information that can be utilized by the brain and the third dimension. There can be information coming from other dimensions that cannot be utilized by the brain, so do not ask for any just random information. You must be more specific and have your brain open in a way that can handle and process third dimensional psychic energy and also the opening of the third eye so that the information there can be connected and processed properly. Thank you very much. I have a question with regard to Arcturian healing because I'm sure in my healing um, I have a lot of Arcturian energy that participates. Yes. Um, and I... Um, I mean, I don't know what my soul's purpose is, but I have this inkling that it, it, it involves healing. Um, <laughs> and, and one thing I, I realized this last week, I um, participated in a shamanic um, ceremony, is that I am not steeped in ceremony. Um, and I know you have a lot of Arcturian energy, and so I was wondering if you would share with me and all of us, like maybe some parts of the ceremony like when you begin a healing what what kind of process do you go through how do you get ready for how do you present we ourselves um, prepare ourselves for healing because we are the instrument that the energy must originally flow through to give the healing so before all healings we are in prayer and meditation 
for us to be at our highest level of acceptance of the proper energies that are coming. The next thing is to prepare the patient, the client, whatever word is used in your species, uh, for the healing and let them know that their energy is going to be also utilized and that vibrationally we will be connected. These are very important to start the healing, to connect our vibrations, to connect our thought processes and make each other aware of where we stand on healing thoughts and actions. Now, we ask that the patient close their eyes and be as comfortable as possible. Also, to listen carefully to the vibrations coming to them. It may open up centers of healing within their brain and body. It is something that the DNA listens for. The DNA wants healing. The DNA is aware of the sounds and vibrations that are given and is aware of the connection of the nerves that we do. You are more attuned to the Hathor portion of Tony and the ceremonies associated with them. But with us, there is really no ceremony when it comes to healing. It is more of the actual just healing activity along with the vibrational lock, one with another. And the vibration also evens out the vibrations that are in the room as well so that things can be more productive and successful. There are some people who want quiet. And I tone, like, say I do long distance healing, and I just tone while right. I'm doing it. There I are, mean, it's not, I, my perception is it's not as effective, but it's still effective. Is that accurate? Is silence? Are you talking about silence? No, I'm talking about I'm toning, but they're not hearing my toning. Like, I'm sending long distance healing. When you send out vibration, it will reach them no matter what, even if they cannot hear the sound, vibration and uh, sound waves are hitting you consistently 100% of the time. So if you are sending out vibrations intentionally to other places or other beings, it will reach them in the vibration of the healing sens sensibilities. They do not have to hear it to actually receive it. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, Eva had a question next. Thank you very much, Mitchell. Yes. Oh, oh. hi. Uh, so I just have one question about me, and then also my mom um, asked for a Octarian healing for her nervous for her nervous system. Um, right. I was wondering, do I have any implants? One moment, a scan must be done. But the answer to the other question first is yes, you have actually received some Octorian healing, but it was from a distance. So you you would have to, whenever you are, mm, ah, you will be in the presence of someone that can do it within a year, perhaps less. Maybe so dumb. Correct. And yes, you do have one in plant. Um, where, for what, and from who, I guess. It is from, you asked for it, actually. It was. It is from Grukvik Nir, if that is the correct pronunciation, and it is for them to help you to come in astral to the colonies more easily. Okay. You did have some trouble originally 
moving in the astral, but now you are quite adept at it. You really wouldn't need the implant any longer. Do I have any implants? One moment, please. Yours were removed. Okay. There is two places where I see implants may have existed, but they are not there at this time. Do you wish to have implants? Um, I wish to have an implant which would help me be relaxed and fearless. I do not know if they exist. They do. We do have ones that can add to those properties. We will see what we can do for you. I will get back to you on that. Thank well, you, you can go ahead and just give everybody that. Everybody okay. wants to know now if they have implants, and everybody wants a healing from you. And <laughs> <laughs> and we'd all like to be calm and fearless, if possible. That'd be great. Of course. <sighs> We do not, there are not implants made for these purposes. Most implants are made for diagnosis of the system and to find out how healthy or non-healthy you are so that you may move between the dimensions if we would like to bring you. We do not usually have implants to cause calmness, relaxation, and higher functions in the body. That is perhaps an invasion of the social thoughts that the Galactic Council may not agree with. Mm -hmm. We would have to get permission for those kinds of implants. Yes. Um, Bobby would like to request, Bobby Soto would like to request maybe connecting with your energy to experience what your he he healing feels like. Yes. So I... He I recommended he connect with you with his mind. Very well. There is someone in this room that wants to connect with me as well. Okay. And who is it? Come forward. Ah. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Greetings. Questions. I yes. know I have three implants. Do I have any more? Any now more than three? Yes, more than three. Now that we're on that subject. No, you have three. And then um, my other question, whenever I see an Octarian statue or something, a picture of them, I feel very connected, very familiar. They're very familiar. Yes. Many people feel connected to our species because we are one of the species that have seeded your population from many millennia ago. We took on human forms at some point. But other times we appeared in our natural states and there are pictures of us in cave dwellings and things of this nature that will, you will see. Perhaps they are not done well, but they are, they are still there nonetheless. And yes, we have connected with your people many times over the centuries. And we have actually understood that you have come to our civilizations through reincarnation many times. So your peoples and our peoples are interconnected at many points. You're welcome. So we only have a couple of minutes left, guys. Um, let's keep our questions real brief. Carrie? Hi, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask if I do have an implant because I requested one from Gert Fickner for channeling and um, mental capabilities. One moment, please. Thank you. Yes, there is one for channeling, but it is not active yet. Let me tell you why. According to them, when you start channeling, this channel, this will help you to channel better. They will add all the ingredients that is, are necessary for you to be a better channel when you do start channeling. Your, it is active in the sense that it is opening the channeling fields, 
but it is not yet active in in the sense that it was created which means that it was created to help you channel better and until you channel at all it cannot help you channel better does that make sense to you yes i have channeled a little bit though all right then they are possibly studying your channel results and will improve on the way that you channel <clears throat> okay thank you so much blessings but it will be activated i'm told that it will be activated soon okay thank you in a greater way actually it is activated but not fully so i'm gonna let uh try and let pete he keeps dropping in and out i'm gonna let him try and ask his question he's been trying the entire webinar oh yes pete. Pete. hello 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 it's nice to meet with you it's nice to meet you as well Hello. Um, I made a I made a question with Grendel, but it cut out. But oh. I'll just mention the same one. Okay. Um, my first question was: Is that there was these group of individuals that uh, came forward in a either a, a webinar or a convention that they were creating this. Um, academy it's called into the stars and it was based on government uh, people that were high ups that came yes. forward and mentioning about what was kept secret and was wondering if this was actually been made for profit or out of no this was of, made for those that were actually wanting first contact uh, a group of pol politicians that are secretly meeting to try to bring first contact into existence in a in a real way they meet in private and away from the other politicians because they are not really uh, the other politicians do not accept their ideas and do not accept aliens the way they they do and understand them so now this secret organization of about 20 there's not very many in it and they are not they are political elites in some senses but they they are not necessarily the they're the the leaders of the countries but those that are close to the leadership and those that have say in the government these people come together very rarely because but they do keep in contact through encrypted messages and they are very much aware of what is going on in the galaxy since they are a secret group and they do connect one with another they have already connected with some aliens um that come to them in uh, holographic or astral form to speak to them and give them advice or give them information that they may need to continue and move forward in a positive way. What is your other question? I cannot hear you. He's muted. Um, Shir had a quick question. Hey, um, my brother and one of my friends really want to ask if either me, Nivi, my brother, or one of our friends, Matan, that I think Jim channeled for him once, if any of us has a connection to the Egyptian god, Kek. Kek. One moment, Is please. Thank you. There's one or more connections to Keck in your family line. Um, your friend, who has been with you in many lifetimes, was is also connected in some way. So you're all three connected. 
I see. The friend also have, um, um, how do you say it? A part of Elijah in him, an aspect of Elijah in him. And yes. he's very, very strong with cake right now. And his uh, work. Can you maybe give me something that I can tell him if it's allowed? Is Elijah and Keck working together? No, I'm saying that he has an aspect of Elijah in him. And he's strong with Keck right now. Yes, very, very much. I see. What, and you need some advice on what? And he's probably wants uh, to know if he has any deeper meaning to the relationship, like if there's any history or work to be done? The meaning of the relationship will come out when the time is right. I am not to expose information that is not to be given at this time. But your relationship to Elijah, his relationship to Elijah will also become greater as well. His relationship with Elijah or my relationship with Elijah? I didn't got it. Yes, both of them, yes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. Pete has a second question. Thank you. I want to hear it. Um, my second question, my second question is, is that, um, Recent years that has gone by, um, I had some um, interactions with other beings, like in the sense like not somewhat physical. For once, I had like an interaction with uh, one of a triangular ships that was across the street many years ago. And I've been... Ever since then, I was patiently waiting for new contacts, new connections, new upgrades. And over time, I feel as if that when I try to connect to a being or a ship, for instance, I like to experience the same connection. Um, my question for that is, is that, uh, is there any way or form that I can actually receive uh, a connection? connection like that the Either connection it, will feel slightly different but it will be a similar connection the earth energies on your planet have changed and there are many other energies entering but you will be able to connect the thing is it will, will not feel exactly the same but we can give you that feeling and we can connect you to that triangular ship because we know of this connection through what you have said. You will be reconnected. Thank you, because I've been meaning to ask if I could actually be on one of those ships at some not point. Not yet. You are not to physically allowed to be on the ships, but you are allowed to be on the ships in some ways, but not in physical. Yes, Thanks. because there's the dangers of that. Well, there it is not permitted by your people or galactic law at this time, but it will be permitted after first contact. But you are allowed to go astrally, and you are allowed to go holographically if they can uh, arrange that. Yes, I like to be registered as one. Very good. Very good indeed. Christina Raposa would love to request a healing from you, please and thank you. Very well. <laughs> I will try to connect with her in her sleep state. I would like to join her in that request. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. It's great you were here today. I think it's about time for Jim to wrap up. So. Yes. I do not so know what love to. it was something of an internal response from this individual. Very well. It has been good to speak with you. And uh, perhaps one time I will return. That would be lovely. It's so love to have you again. Thank you so much for being here.
Much love to you. Love May you. be very gracious to you to have us and us together. Much keep your shouts, keep the good to Hello. Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. How are you? I'm great. That's good. It's on the money. Very excellent webinar. The Arcturian Council joined us and Grindel, okay. of course. And that was really great. So, um, thank you very much. Is there anyone who would like to give a blessing in your room? Everybody out there want to give a closing blessing? I do. Uh, we'll, okay, what? Okay. We'll, never mind. Will in here. Is that Pete out there? Yes. Who's out there, Peter? Yes. Yes. Okay, and, and you too, Michelle? Sure. And then Will will go last. Who will, who will go first? Pete. Okay. Here, go first. Okay. Energies and connections to the universe are becoming stronger and will continue to gain energy through the next several years. You will find yourself engaged in thoughts that may not even seem appropriate, but they are part of the information that's coming from beyond. Do not be afraid of it, but listen carefully to the positivity behind it. Will, would you please go next? She had your cohona yata. No hosh show your cohona yet. She she will cohota hosh hoya. Ea kahoa chishishia. Nihia katatona wata harshishia. There are lights emanating from all parts of your planet and lights coming to your planet to make it more brilliant. Remember to keep these lights bright. Stand up, be fearless. Know that your light makes a difference. Remember that healing is part of what you all are to do because sometimes words are healing and sometimes words are not. Remember to make your words and your actions healing and uplifting. Remember to bring the light into the world and keep it as bright as it can be. Ayatsu kata ananayata yata kananayata usha amanayata ko. Ayatsu tenanayata ko usha ananayanam. Metike ninayata ayusi tike na tosha ananayata am. Sete ananayata ay. Osha kotala ananayata. Sete alko osha na. Meata ananayake e etu um. Seata ananay. Kotu ananay ke eta. Do, do not worry about the future no matter what you see around you. No matter what things happen or no matter what catastrophes may seem to be uh, uh, happening all around you, but keep your faith and keep your strength and courage. Move forward because this is the time for you to shine 
This is the time for you to reach out and let the others take your hand and have you lift them up and comfort them. You will have to be the strength. So please be aware that others will need you in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for an awesome Saturday webinar. Thank you, Jim, so much. Have a um, great day. Thank yeah. you. Thank everybody have a fantastic whatever day it is and you're part of the world, okay? <laughs> whatever day. Much love. <laughs> we'll see you again next Saturday. Join us. Uh, check things out at hookahook.org. I won't be here next Saturday, but I will be here the following Saturday after that. Fantastic. But I'll be traveling next Saturday, so that'll be fun. Have fun. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. You too. Thank you. Much, Much love. love. Thank you, Michelle. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. It was very good.